Greetings, members and friends of Emmanuel United Church of Christ. I am overjoyed that you've decided to join me here as we reflect this third Sunday of Ordinary Time on a passage the lectionary presents before us that is particularly fitting in the time we're going through. It is a lament psalm that expresses a frustration with, How long, O Lord, will this carry on forever? And so to lead us into our reflection of that psalm, I want to, as usual, invite you to join me in calming your heart with a call to worship. If you want, you can read the words that are in bold. If not, just listen in. When we walk the pathways of destruction, we are met by the God of peace and reconciliation. When we sit and wonder if there's any way we can be of help, we encounter the Holy One who invites us to faithful service. When we least expect it, the Holy One through the Spirit, offers us life-giving water. With this call before us, we're looking at the lectionary psalm for today, Psalm 13. It is a short psalm, and I've tried to place the entire psalm on the screen so that you can see it all at once. And it reads like this. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. We're going to reflect on this psalm in a message titled, How Long, O Lord, Protest Songs for God's People. Smack dab in the middle of our Bibles. You can just open a Bible and if it drops to the middle, you will discover the book of Psalms. It is the longest book in the Bible. It is the most quoted book from the sacred scriptures, and it is the most diverse book of the Old Testament. It is Israel's worship manual. It consists of hymns and prayers that were used in worship gatherings, and because of it is a deeply loved book, because the book of Psalms covers all of our human experiences, from the positive experiences of being glad and joyful and grateful, to some of our more negative experiences of being sad and pained and fearful, hurting, anxious, despairing. The Psalms covers all of this wide variety of emotions because the psalmists want to make it clear to us that God is interested in knowing us in every circumstance, that God wants to hear from us no matter what our state of mind is, no matter what our situation is, so that we can have the confidence we don't have to be theologically correct, waiting for the so-called right emotions to arise so that we can have the proper experience of worship. Worship can include a vast variety of emotions. And that's what occurs in the Psalms, all diverse experiences. But the chief experience of the psalmist is lament. There are almost 60 psalms that are considered by scholars to be lament psalms. Now, lament psalms express struggles and sorrows and disappointments to Yahweh, and these struggles and sorrows and disappointments arise from three main sources, which our very short psalm actually includes all three of those sources. I'll highlight those in bold so you can see the first source of complaint is usually just trouble within our own souls or our own self. Verse 2, how long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart? Sometimes our complaint or frustration is with the actions of others, which are usually labeled enemies in the Psalms. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? My enemy will say I have prevailed. And then, of course, sometimes our complaints arise from frustrations with God. How long, O oh Yahweh, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Lament Psalms acknowledge a valid dimension of faith, a dark side of faith, because hear me carefully, beloved, 
walking with God is not always soothing or consoling, and it's certainly not always upbeat and positive, because faith doesn't solve all our problems. Sometimes it adds to them. Sometimes because of our faith, we have doubts and are afraid and confused, troubled, distressed, not quite certain why God is delaying God's redemption. This experience of frustration and challenge and disappointment with God is replete throughout the entirety of sacred scriptures. Here's just a few examples. Job will pray to God, I despise my life. Let me alone. My days have no meaning. I loathe my own life. Moses will say to the Lord, please kill me at once. Elijah will say, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. Jonah will say, death is better to me than life. Paul will speak, and we just studied this on Wednesday nights, we were burdened excessively beyond our strength so that we despaired even of life. And of course, even our Lord Jesus said, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. This is a common experience for the faithful, this idea of lament and sorrow and frustration. And the Psalter helps us with knowing what to do when these feelings arise, because certainly we're not to ignore these feelings. We're not to deny them or repress them. We are instead to express them, to embrace them and express these feelings honestly to God. And at that moment, those feelings, whether positive or negative, become expressions of worship. And one of the beautiful aspects of our lament psalms is they help us to truly embrace and express our painful feelings to God. Now, the psalm we have before us is the shortest lament psalm in the Psalter, and it covers all of the three movements of, of lament, protest, petition, and praise. It begins with the protest, speaking directly to Yahweh. How long, O oh Yahweh, covenant God, how long will this go on forever? Have you forgotten me? The psalmist in this complaint, this protest, is not seeking information, but the psalmist is describing their present situation with a rising intensity. How long will you forget me forever? Obviously, for the psalmist, his or her struggle has continued for a long time so that time has slowed to a crawl, and it seems like there's never going to be an end to his or her situation. It seems to be going on forever. And so that exclamation, how long, underscores the psalmist in patience with God, because the psalmist feels that they can take this no longer. The psalmist's heart is on their sleeve with deep emotional pain, stretched to the breaking point, with no end in sight. And our psalmist is troubled by three things, the three things that we've mentioned. And again, I want to draw your attention to this so you can see this from the psalm. The psalmist is frustrated with God's apparent lack of concern. Verse 1, why isn't God doing something? Why is God hiding? Is God deliberately hiding? The psalmist feels abandoned and complains to God because the psalmist feels deserted by God. And that's why the psalmist complains so urgently and intensely. But the psalmist actually also has a sense of inner turmoil. You see in verse 2 this anguish within. How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart at the core of my being all day long? And then finally, the psalmist expresses complaint about the actions of others. Will my enemies be proved right in the end? Is it true that it doesn't really pay to have faith, to serve Yahweh? Why be faithful to God if God seems to delay God's salvation? And so after those three complaints in verse 3 and 4, our psalmist cries out, Hear me, help me. Verse 3, consider and answer me. And what's amazing in verse 3, and it's why I leave the screen before you, is an amazing thing happens in verse 3. This lament, verse 1, how long, O Lord, is followed by the affirmation that the Lord Yahweh is still the psalmist God. Verse 3, consider and answer me, O Lord my God. The psalmist prays to the God that the psalmist knows, even though that he or she feels abandoned, disturbed, still knows that this God is their God. And that's why in verse 5 and 6, 
all of the lament psalms with the exception of one, Psalm 88, end with an expression of trust. Verse 5, I've trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. This is one of the most puzzling aspects of lament psalms for most people. How is it that every lament psalm, with the exception of one, Psalm 88, ends with a recommitment to God? What's the reason for such an abrupt change of mood? And the answer lies in one word, chesed, God's steadfast covenant love. But I have trusted in your chesed, your steadfast covenant love. Because the psalmist remembers in the midst of their heartache that their faith in God is faith in a God who's bigger than the present moment. However long this trial lasts, God's faithful covenant love is steadfast. It's eternal. It's unfailing. It's a love that will not let go. And the psalmist says, I have trusted in the past in God's has said. And so whether I feel it now or not, with my whole heart, I will rejoice that God's faithful covenant love will be there in the future. And there will be an end to this sorrow one day. And that I will sing again of God's faithfulness. Now, what's interesting in our psalm is the psalmist's circumstances have not changed one iota. But what has changed is the psalmist perspective. The psalmist's perspective now focuses past all the trials and struggles and sorrows and frustrations and complaints. And the psalmist gaze focuses on the eternal, steadfast, covenant love of God. Now, the psalmist could not have come to that conclusion without honest, candid complaint to God. The psalmist's lament actually led to a more authentic relationship with God. So the complaint, the protest, is not a lack of trust. The complaint and protest actually arises from a deep trust because the psalmist understands that the covenantal love of God is so strong that the psalmist can be entirely honest and communicate to God whatever he or she is feeling, whether good or bad, during all experiences of life, and know that God will faithfully hear and that God will faithfully respond. Well, lament teaches us how to integrate our protest and our petitions and our praise. It teaches us that we can have a complex set of emotions as we approach God, that we can both experience agony and adoration, that extreme emotions can be held together and experienced at the same time, that we can both complain and trust. We can feel forsaken and yet pray prayers of commitment. And the greatest example of that extreme complexity of motions, both complaint and trust, forsakenness and commitment, is evidenced by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross during his darkest hour, during his greatest moment of lament, where he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in that cry, you can hear, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long will my enemy exalt over me? But it's not just the feeling of forsakenness that Christ cries out, that sense of abandonment, my God, why have you forsaken me? But just a few verses later, Christ also cries out, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Lament, trust, forsakenness, commitment. Into your hands, I commit my spirit, or Psalm 13, verse 5, I've trusted in your steadfast love my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Perhaps it's at a time like this that we need the lament psalms more than ever. As we all experience the pain of separation, the confusion of this new normal, our ache for relief, perhaps it's at moments like this that we need to take our protest to God and trust that God is big enough to handle our complaints and our confusion and frustration to trust that God's eternal love will be our resting place in our moments of deepest darkness and suffering. And that even if it takes longer than we expected, 
or we think we're experiencing more than we can endure, we must look to that one constant that's always true, God's has said, God's faithful covenant love, so that we can say at the end of all our complaints with the psalmist, but I trust in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. Now I'm gonna invite you to, with me, pray this very psalm of lament, and I'm going to include petitions in between each of our prayers that will add to and express each one of these phrases. And so I'm going to invite you to read along with me the psalm, and then I'll pray in between petitions that we are going to present to the Lord. So if you'd say with me, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? We pray for those who feel forgotten and unseen. May they know that they are remembered and seen by you, God. Help us to partner with you to remember the forgotten. Search our hearts to reveal those we hide our faces from, the outcast, the stranger, or the homeless. Change our hearts that we may turn our faces towards these people and see them as your beloved children. And then if you would continue to pray with me, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? We pray for those we know who struggle with illnesses, anxiety, depression. We pray that there will be resources to help enough staff employed in finances given to services nationally. Help us to be a friend and a listening ear to those who suffer. Fill us with compassion and wisdom. Ultimately, we pray for those who wrestle with sorrow, that they may know your victory over these dark thoughts, which currently seem to triumph. And then if you continue with me, look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death, and my enemy will say I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. We pray for those who might be considered fallen by those around them. May they know your restoration and grace. Help us not judge or exclude your beloved children, but instead lift them up in prayer and embrace them with the grace we know in Christ. Thank you, faithful, loving God, for hearing our prayer. And thus we proclaim together in conclusion, and if you join me, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. God of eternal covenant faithfulness and grateful response to your love, we stand together with all your saints throughout the world, praying as you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I hope something said or prayed this morning or whenever you're watching this was encouraging to you, challenging, convicting, hopefully inspiring, perhaps legitimizing some of the complaints and frustrations you have. Know that you can always bring them to God. God is not waiting for us to feel joyful or grateful before we can express our hearts to God. God already knows our hearts. God knows what's going on deep within. It would be silly to try to hide that from God. Instead, it's best, using the example of the Psalms, to no matter what our experience, no matter what our emotions, embrace them and express them to the Lord, always putting them in the context of God's eternal, steadfast, covenant faithfulness to us and to this world. And so until we gather again, I want to leave you with this benediction. May the love of God, the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessed fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.